So do you think the end resulting machine you build would actually work? I think I think I could probably get close now. I mean, I think 10 years ago I wouldn't have been able to, but I've seen, we, we've just finished shooting the 10th series of scrapping the, the, just recently, which was go out later this year, but, and, and you can't help but absorb it over that time. Some of it has gone in. Um, I forget to measure things. <laughs> but I've also seen like when people have made quite complicated things out of metal, um, and which I always think is hard stuff, and then they just cut it in half and shorten it and make it fit. When you see people do that, and then you've had a go with a big disc cutter, and you can actually, you can, I mean, I could now cut a car in half in 40 seconds if I had one of them. I mean, it just cuts things in half. It's brilliant. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to put it back together, but I could cut it in half. So I'd be quite good at wrecking stuff. That's why I would be a good scavenger, and I'd be good at breaking things. I'm quite good at that. But the delicate measurement stuff, and making an engine work that wasn't working, I'd get frustrated and hit it with a hammer. Because that, that stuff, when, you, when people listen to it, they go, and they go, oh yeah. And they know what it is. To me, it's just the Scrappy Symphony, which is. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Or an electric car. Electric dragster. I saw an electric dragster a couple of years ago, which a human being can't drive because it would kill them. It's that fast. And it looks like a dragster. It can only do a quarter of a mile, and it does it in under a second. So it's like a gun. It's, radio, it's a radio control one, and they've tried it, and it always crashes, and they put a rail that was guided by a rail. So it does 0 to 60 in 0.05 of a second. So, so you see it, it just goes like that. And it's done it, and you go, that's a race. It's really dull to watch. <laughs> After the first time, you know, it, just, it doesn't make any noise, and it just goes, it's, 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 it's basically an experiment to see how fast you can make an electric vehicle go. And it's, it would, the G force would kill the person, so they can't put anyone in it. I won't talk about electric cars, that's boring. <laughs> Unless someone wants to ask me a question about electric cars. <laughs> no, don't. Anybody else got a question? <laughs> Even vaguely red dwarf related, I suppose, would be good, but it doesn't have to be. Hello. Oh, yeah. Um, Quantum had to see the Quantum Hadron Collider and the Bob and Yeah. Uh, which one was your favourite? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be sexist, but I think it was Bob. I like Madge, but Bob was really, you know, I had a lot of long chats with Bob. Particularly when he just suddenly walked away. For no reason. And those people with red remote control things going, and he just went off. Just, <laughs> he, was, he, was his own, he was his own scutter, was Bob. He didn't, he didn't take fools lightly. <laughs> he wasn't prepared to hang around the set if he got bored, he just wandered off. Usually into a wall and just sort of stopped. Him. <laughs> he was affected when we filmed with him in Manchester. He was, we think it was the, ta the local taxi firms used the same frequency. Apparently, I mean it's ridiculous. But Bob would be there doing, and they just go. Bob's gone. Bob's Bob. Bob the scutter. <laughs> no, I love Bob. But Madge was she was kind. She was kinder and more stable. Bob was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> Um, down, down the front. When you, you know, when you finished having a chat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People waiting. <laughs> oh, but I don't know who it was. Now. Was it? Oh, yes, there. Sorry. No, I'm worse. Um, would you have liked to have done more um, Jeremy Beadle stuff, like in the uh, Criterion? Oh, Criterion TV. Yeah, I love doing Criterion TV. I don't know, really, in real life, don't, I'm not very good at, I don't really like practical jokes, but Crikey TV was very special. I did like that. Oh, it's gone the wrong way now. But I, yes, I wouldn't want to do a real Jeremy Beadle show. Thank you. Please. <laughs> oh, do that one first. In a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, someone asked Chris Barry, I think, will ask me the same. Um, are you happy with the way that season eight ended? I mean, would you like more closure for your character? I, I certainly didn't mind it from the point of view of my character because I think he, because the fact that he wasn't human, he'd reached a sort of a plateau of, uh, of understanding of human nature, which I thought was quite good. But, uh, but certainly from the point of view of the series, yes, it was a real shame we didn't do, didn't do series nine and ten or the movie. You know, that's uh, that, that sort of remains of. A great shame, really, because I think there was, so, there was so obviously it could have gone on, and uh, you know, for all the reasons we all now know, we're all very aware of it didn't, and it's a shame because I think 
Yeah, it would have been good too. But that's the way it went. <laughs> yeah. Remake them. Mm -hmm. God, I've never been asked that before. That is weird. I don't know what. What? Uh, I, I mean, I'm always. It's the one thing I've done. That I, when I look back at it, I go. I, I'm. It's still in awe of the writing and the structure of it, and the pacing and the directing, and even the acting. <laughs> and I say that with enormous respect and love for my fellow performers in it. But I mean, it's the only thing I can watch that I'm in. I can't bear watching anything else that I'm in. But I can watch that, and because it's sort of like not me. It's, you know, I do think of Crichton as someone else, and uh, so so from that point of view, it's quite. I can't imagine what you could do. I mean, there was there were some some ideas that, that certainly I talked about with Doug in great detail, like having a like, that Crichton has a baby, which I thought would just be nice to have a little little baby Crichton. <laughs> 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 would have been very cute. So a little bit of sort of. Um, you know, so there were sort of ideas that we didn't do that we discussed, all sorts of, um, and you know, even one where, the, an episode where the, 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 uh, Cat Rimmer and, and Lister would have been mechanoids and I'd be human. You know, we talked about that, that they all have that makeup on. You know, so there were sort of daft things that we came up with that never got made. So, so in that sense, there's lots of things I wish we had done, but there's not, I can't think of a, an episode where I think, oh, I wish we'd done that differently, or I wish that wasn't, because I, I think they're so cleverly written that, I certainly couldn't improve on them in any way at all, though, as I learned from trying to write one. That was a very good lesson. <laughs> <coughs> um, do you know how you had the character of the Spearhead 3? Um, yeah. Would you ever like to have expanded on that at all? Yes, but I like the Spearhead 3 is definitely. I mean, I think they could have been, you know, a little, like in the, when, in the, many years ago in the Archers, the radio. Sto everyday story of country folk. Um, there was a, one of the characters used to do a little monologue at the beginning of the Sunday special of the Archers. Well, it was on the Tuesday that Tom King wrote me that. And I just thought that would be a great way to open every episode of Red Dwarf. You know, you open the cupboard and then it's really. Mr. Really Schmidt got this way, didn't he? Terrible ideas. Doug just went, yeah, 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 no. <laughs> But I did love the, I love the spare. It's the most, the most uncomfortable thing to do, <laughs> to kneel on a box with your head through a hole. You really can't go to the loo when you're doing those ones. You can't get out of it trapped. But no, I love the spare heads. They were, they were great fun. Silicon Ricketts. Lovely. And then? Is the character of Jim in the Vicar of Dibley based on Doug, do you think? <laughs> oh, I if there's a, I don't no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, no. no. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, no. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the connection quite who knew, who knows who. I can't think. No. I don't think so. I think, I mean, because it was Chris picked up on that. It, you know, his genius at noticing those little foibles. Uh, I mean, it was it basically, when we, whenever we do a, an impression of anyone, it's us doing a very bad impression of Chris doing a brilliant impression of that person. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. <laughs> but he did used to do that. He did used to do it, definitely. I don't know. No, I don't think it is. Sorry, no, good, very good connection. But I don't think that is a comedy connection.